Today, I'm going to do a quick demo on contained databases, a new feature in SQL Server 2012. These databases are different from regular uncontained databases in that contained databases don't depend on the SQL instance. Its configuration, database settings, metadata, they're all contained within the database. This includes user information. With regular uncontained databases, an issue we commonly run into when moving a database from one server to another is that the database users become orphaned. Either the database users don't match up with the logins on the new server or they need to be resynced. With contained databases, you won't run into this issue. One thing to know is that fully contained databases are actually not available yet in SQL Server 2012. Right now we can only create partially contained databases. With fully contained database, there is zero dependency on the configuration of the SQL instance. With partially contained, some uncontained features are still allowed. So you can still have database users map to the server login. So before we can create contained databases, the feature needs to be enabled first. And the command to do that is run spconfigure on the property contained database authentication. And now we have the feature enabled. Let's go ahead and create a contained database. Could go to new database. Let's call this contained database CDB1. And under options is where you make this change. Under containment type, select partial. Notice that full is not available yet. Our partially contained database is created. Let's go ahead and create a user for it. I'm going to create a new user called CDB user1. Now this user has no dependency on the server, so you don't need a corresponding server login. For normal users, they authenticate with the server first and then connect with the database. For users in a contained database, you can connect directly to the database. To do this, there's an extra step you need to perform. Let's try logging in with this user we just created. Now, I get this error when I try to log in. This is because it's trying to authenticate against the server first. And since there's no server login, I get this login failed. So the extra step that we need to perform is under options, go to connection properties, and we need to specify the database we want to connect to. Since the user only exists in this database, we have to specifically say we need to connect here. and now we can connect. The same thing applies to application connection strings. For your application, you need to specify the database you want to connect to by including the parameter called initial catalog in your connection string. For this next example, I'm going to convert a normal uncontained database to a contained database. And I'll do that to this database here, testdb2. It currently has a containment type of none. You could change it here, or you can use SQL command alter database test db2 set containment equal to partial. The next thing we need to do is identify the entities that are uncontained. We need to identify these entities so that we can remove their dependency on the SQL instance. We can use sysdmdb uncontained entities to find these uncontained entities.
this shows two entities one user and one route let's take care of the user one first if we look in database principles we see that there is a user in there right now test db user one and it's authenticating against the instance we wanted to authenticate against the database instead so we need to migrate it with sp migrate user to contain the parameters are the user we want to migrate we're going to keep the same name and once we finish migrating disable the server login now when we view the uncontained entities we only see one item there the user is not there anymore and if we take a look at database principles the authentication type for the user becomes database let's take care of the other uncontained item which is route the route is created by default for the service broker if you're not using service broker you can just go ahead and delete it I'm not using it so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that Under service broker routes, there is one route, auto created local. And now if we take a look at uncontained entities, there shouldn't be anything left. Having a database that's contained and that doesn't rely on the server settings makes it easy to move the database around. Let's move this database to another server here. I'll move it to my other server name instance SQL 1. I'll first back up the database and then restore it to my other instance. Normally after you move databases, you're going to have some orphan users, especially for that user that we created the test user for test DB2. But if we look at the report, we see there are no orphan users. And we should be able to connect using test DB user one without any issues. Again, we need to make sure that we set our connection property connect to database to test DB2. And we could successfully connect. So it's easy to move databases from one server to another. And this is just one example of how contained databases can make the life of an administrator easier. This concludes the short demo on contained databases. Thanks for watching.